with what God is getting ready to do in your life. You ever, you ever been happy for somebody? You see somebody come to a sickness, you ought to be happy for them. Somebody gets a raise on their job, you ought to be happy for them. New car, new job, new house, you ought to be happy for them.
is God. From my mouth to your ears in Jesus' name. Come on, bless him with your hand clap. witnesses of these things yes. and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him when they heard that they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them yeah. isn't that amazing that somebody's always trying to get you yeah, yeah. Then verse 34 says, Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, and had a reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. Listen to what he said to them. And said unto them, You men of Israel, take heed to yourselves or be careful of your intentions of what you're going to do concerning these apostles. Yes. Amen. Amen. Today's subject, think twice. Amen. 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 Think. Yes, think twice. Thank you, greetings. Uh, anybody here old school? Yes, sir. Old school? Yeah. I learned a lot from listening to old people. Right, right, right. Because they would, they would tell you, if you shut up, maybe you'd learn something. Amen. Right. <laughs> They will tell us that you're going to reap what you sow. Right. Right. And then they will tell us something that many of us have learned the hard way. When you dig one ditch, right. yeah, you better dig two. Amen. Those of you that have been in here with us for the past month, month and a half, We've been dealing in the Acts of the Apostles with chapter 5. And if you were paying careful attention, you learned something in the beginning verses of Acts chapter 5. Mm -hmm. You lie, you die. Amen. We also found out that Jesus' word is true. Yeah. How many of you have hopes and dreams and aspirations? Yes. Even old people uh -huh. used to be concerned about us as little ones, about where our heads was at, right. concerning our hopes, our dreams, and our aspirations. Come on, go back with me. 
You remember when Miss Willie Mae would come over to the house and lean down and ask you a simple question. Because they had a concern about your future and they wanted to see where your head was at at a young age. And they would simply ask, what you want to be when you get big? Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. But sometimes your beliefs, your hopes, your dreams and your aspirations can land you in hot water. All right. <laughs> Why? Because everybody does not agree with your vision. Uh -huh. I think I need to tell you that one size does not fit all. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what you believe in can be life threatening. In Acts chapter 5, the apostles are faced with threats. And imprisonment. But hmm. in spite of threats, imprisonments, and humiliation, uh -huh. they stay the course. That's right. Can I see a show of hands if you've ever worked on a job with messy people? Yeah. And they get quiet when you come in the break room. Yeah. You know what they were talking about before you walked in? Me. Talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> But you know what? Thank God that you are something and somebody to be discussed. Right. right. Don't, don't, don't trip on the fact that people are talking about you behind your back because even Jesus said, be very careful when everybody speaks good things about you. Why? Because yes, anybody here knows, even with a half an eye, that a smile ain't nothing but a frown. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> to be misunderstood because of your beliefs. Yes. What is your determining factor? In other words, what, what's your feelings on where you are in life right now? Mm. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't even have to convict your own self. But are you happy <coughs> with your life now? Are you happy in the present situation that you're in now. Hmm. Speak. Where do, I'm talking to some of us that are very optimistic. Where do you want to be 20 years from now? Have mercy. Have mercy. Younger folk 30 years from now. Hmm. 40 years from now. God forbid any of us in here get struck down with a tragedy that we never experienced what the old people used to call a deathbed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ever seen, you ever had to take care of somebody before they died? Come on, somebody. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. There is such a thing as a deathbed. Right. But I am told, <clears throat> I am told that when a loved one is getting ready to transition one of the things that they want to know is, am I leaving things in good hands? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. You know what else they want to know? They want that that's from an, an, an outward, outward statement. Go ahead. Go ahead. But then there's an inner statement that probably all of us may want to know before we take our last breath. And what is that? Is my living, has it been in vain? Yeah, yeah. In other oh. words, did I do something to help somebody right. while I had the change? Yes. 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 Every day, a lady has a shirt she wears sometimes, and she makes sure that I see it. And she'll just bust it out like this. <laughs> <coughs> you know what the shirt says? Every day, I have to fight. Anybody ever been there? Come on, let's go old school. You remember when somebody said, I'll see you at the back gate at 3 o'clock? Right. You know it was on and popping. You have to come to the back gate with your A game. But every day we are faced with opposition, almost on a daily. But I want to tell you this, too, brother. Be prepared in this world, in this life, to suffer some setbacks. You're not going to be very successful if you can't deal with some setbacks and some disappointments. Do you not know that sometimes setbacks and disappointment will make you stronger? Yeah. We are 
correcting our kids because we, as parents and grandparents, don't know how to tell them no. and every one of us probably we didn't, without us even knowing probably had a teacher who taught us that didn't believe in our potential. Thank God that you're the first one to finish high school. Thank God you're the first one to finish college mm. in your family. Amen on that. But that if you did not Touch your name and say, no judgment. No judgment. Yeah. Be prepared, Be prepared. For, to suffer setbacks. Uh -huh. Right. Be prepared for tests All right. and disappointments. Yes, sir. How do you deal with the intangibles? That's what you, what, what, what you just said. Intangibles. In, intangibles. You know, a lot of times we, Lisa, Tony, we don't prepare for intangibles. Right. That's what you're talking about. You know, on paper, when we talk, when we start writing down all our bills on paper, it looks like we got it down. Uh -huh. This going to that. Yes. That going to this. Mm. I'm gonna use this here for that. Mm. I'm gonna use this here for that. I got enough of my mortgage, my rent, my insurance, my car note, my light bill, my gas bill, and my water bill. But the intangibles are what you gonna do when you need four tires? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. I'm not saying nothing to him. Yeah. What you gonna do when little Johnny get his butt in jail and the lawyer say, I'll take the case for about 10 grand? Yeah. Wow. Right. Intangibles. Right. You 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 had you paid the water bill, but you didn't know the pipe was finna break. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Touch your neighbor says always something. Uh, every time I try to get one step ahead, something knocks me. You know what it is? Bad luck is called intangibles. Right. And Rodney, some of us don't deal with intangibles well because the old people used to say it's okay to save for a rainy day. Yeah. You know why many of us are spoiled? Because it ain't rained yet in your life. You just like these kids, you feel entitled. Can nobody tell you no? Who are you? Uh -huh. How will you respond yes. when you've been misunderstood and all you want to do is just do your job? That's right. right. That's right. <coughs> Hands, you just want to do your job. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what they hired you to do. And go home. Amen. But you're misunderstood. Right. No mercy, Lord. Anybody in here? When that alarm clock go off in the morning, you say, "Damn." <laughs> because at the end of the day, you 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 know what you got facing you when you get to that job. And the person that hates you the most, always that the most. <laughs> and, and sometimes we have to remember that your beliefs and what you value may not be a high wrong on somebody else's life. Right, right, Some right. people could care less about where you want to be 20 years from now. Have mercy. Somebody could care less because you have some issues, some health issues, right. some financial issues, some spiritual issues, some emotional issues. Somebody, they could care less. That's right. Care less. But you know what? Every day, every day, is some kind of fight. Yeah. 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 And watch this. You don't ever know. It's like a boxer. They got them hands and will put them hands on. Y'all remember Mike Tyson? Oh, yeah. Mike put them hands on people. And every now and then, we get hit from all different directions. Right. 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 And watch this. Sometimes 
It's the people you expect the least that's doing the most. You got to be very careful about who you put your trust in these days. I like this because they asked Peter and the apostle standing behind him says, didn't we tell you or didn't we command you that you were not to teach anymore in this name? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, some of us in here, and let's be real, and, I, and I'm, I'm one of those two. I got a job working in the Houston Independent School District mm -hmm. in 1981. The man that in interviewed me, Gwen Newton, he didn't know me from Adam, but he knew my last name. Uh -huh. Some of us are where we are today, not because of what you've done, but because somebody knew you. That's right. right. See it. It ain't, it, listen, listen, listen. It ain't what you know. It ain't even who you know. It's who knows you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because who knew my mother? Right. Yeah. All right. You don't ever want to live your life to where you become a detriment or chaos to the offspring of your seed. Yeah. 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 We round here acting a fool when we go to that, that job. Yeah. And you want to clown. You, 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 we holier than thou on Sunday. And can't nobody out cuss you on money. <laughs> and you, 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 you tell everybody what church you go to, but you go to that school and you act a damn fool. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the last thing that you ought to do is co-sign on the foolishness of your child. Planted by the rivers of water. Mm -hmm. 
no matter how bad you talk about me, I cannot and I will not and I won't be moved. Anybody ever been bullied? Yeah. Everybody ever got bullied yeah. when you were growing up. But you know what? You know when things changed? When you took a stand? Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Said, I'm not doing this no more. Yeah. You're not going to keep beating me up. You're not going to keep taking my lunch money. Come on, somebody. Go ahead. You're not going to be taking my clothes. Mm. It was when you take a stand. Well, I can deal. I can deal with the dirty looks talk. I can deal with that. Yeah, yeah. And you ought to be think. You ought to think twice about rolling your eyes at somebody. Because <laughs> God can fix it when they'll never get straight. Yeah. <laughs> for you. That's right. He'll come down from the sky. Oh, yes. Wipe the tears from your eye. You're his child and he cares for you. Oh, yeah. Sometimes our day is a little bit brighter when we know that somebody cares for us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm closing on this. In Acts chapter 5, verse 29, Peter is the spokesman for the apostles. Not only does he say what he means, he means what he says. Uh -huh. I like in, it's right there in verse 29 when then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, right there in King James, he used the word we. 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 I don't care who you are. At some point in your life, you're going to need some we help. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. You don't need them on the way up. Mm -hmm. Might need them on the way down. Yeah, yeah. And the last thing that you should ever utter is, I don't need you. Have yeah. mercy, Lord. Every now and then, we yes, need some help. That's yeah. right. You know what I like about the word we is? Because we is a word of inclusion. And sometimes when you're going through something, Quit tripping about it because you're not in it alone. Whatever you're going through, I promise you, you're not the first one that's been through it. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but you know why God allows us to go through things? Uh, because we have a testimony, and because if we never go through anything, how are you going to handle stuff when the stuff real do really Amen. does come? Right. Amen. The prophet was asked one day if the rain has beat you down. Uh -huh. How you gonna handle a storm? Mm. Uh -huh. Listen. It rolled out. Make you go somewhere and sit down. Mm. Go ahead. What are you gonna do when you get slapped in your face? Ooh. Have mercy, Lord. You know what keeps you going? Because you know that come with me, you can do all things through Christ. That's right, that's right, that's right. Anybody have to use it before? Oh, yeah. Then finally, watch this. You got to understand that Peter had an opportunity. They told him, stop preaching and teaching in this name. But how many of you know it's something about that name you just can't let go? That's right. That's right. He says, we ought to.
to obey God That's right. rather than man. Mm -hmm. In verse 32, he would use the word we again. He said, we are his witnesses. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what are you saying? I'm saying it, 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 it's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. This thing that we're doing, it's, today. It's, just, it's bigger than just you. Mm -hmm. Somebody somewhere is dependent on how you talk about how good your God is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, sir. Why would I want to serve God? And all I ever do is hear you complaining and criticizing. Right. Complain, preacher, make a point. Peter knew what could possibly happen. Why? Because he knew what had happened to him already. You're right. This man had been put in jail about three times because of what he believed in. And they told him to stop doing it. But he said, we'd rather obey God than, than you. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But in, in my, my closing, when they were getting ready to decide their fate, you know, some people, will, they'll have a little pride in me know how they're going to handle you. Oh, going on. Have And you know why a lot of times we fall victim to that? Because we're too busy running our mouths about what we don't like and what we can't stand. Oh. <laughs> you know what the devil does? He studies us. He studies us. He gets into our head. Tells us what and who we don't want, want around us and who we don't like. And you know what we do? We buy them tickets all the time they sell. <clears throat> Instead of telling him where he can go. Mm -hmm. I like this when it closes out because there's always somebody. And if that person is you and the family, be, be proud. Uh -huh. Sisters, <laughs> you ain't gonna say man on this one. <laughs> Back in the day, you call him, he don't answer the phone. What do you do? You call up your girlfriend. Can you come ride somewhere with me? What you're looking for. Yeah. I was right and said, see, and you will find it. But then that's all when you had two kind of girlfriends. One would co-sign with that foolishness. Get out of her bed, roll us all in the house. And then there was another girlfriend that said, you, that you didn't call her because you know you don't call her with that foolishness. Because I'm not going to jail with you, and I ain't going to jail for you. You want to hear something real stupid? You know what comes right before suicide? When somebody say, watch this. That was a man by the name of Gamaliel. And maybe this, you are the Gamaliel of your family. Mm. Y'all got to listen to how I'm done. Maybe you are the Gamaliel in your family. It's, it, it's, right, it's right there for a few verses down. He's listening. Y'all remember Hardy Lewis? He used to be here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love that man. Because yeah. you know what? He had a way about him. And he was a big man. No, yeah. he, was, he was a yeah. physically big man. Right. Big, huge hands. Yeah. Kind of, those of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, kind of, just, just kind of picture an older brother of Morgan Freeman. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 that do justice? Really good, real good. And when we would have meetings, if I didn't know any better, I would think he was not paying attention. Because oh, he's sitting in the meeting with his head down his eyes closed. Uh -huh. yeah. But little did I know he was listening to any and everything yeah, right. that was going on in that meeting. Uh -huh. You may be the Gamaliel. You may be the Hoy Lewis of your family. Yeah. To where your family members are getting ready to do something. Watch this. Real stupid. Uh -huh. How many of y'all got some stupid relatives that do stupid stuff? Yeah. I'm going to close on with this. You may be 
the Gamaliel, that was his name, respected in the community. Everybody looked up. He was like the E of Hutton. When, when he talked, everybody shut up. Remember, mama used to talk, you better get quiet. Daddy had something to say, you better be quiet and listen. Right. Yeah. Gamaliel was listening. Knowing his heart knows. Just listen. Mm -hmm. Because he's listening to what these people are getting ready to do again to these apostles. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Now, how many of you were scared of whippings when you were growing up? Yeah. And then you had that one sister and one brother just stand there and take them legs. Yeah. <laughs> Because it gets to the point where with, with one side don't fit all. You got a sister, you show up, girl, she pass out. <laughs> but then you have that other brother, that other sister standing there just take it like a, like a soldier. Yep. Right. And don't lie. Just make them cry. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> the man, he, he says that he says, you better be very careful. He said, let me. He said, I'm talking now. He said, y'all better watch out and be careful what y'all getting ready to do with these men. And then he goes, he starts giving them some current events about what had happened to some other people that tried to do something against God's people. He said, all of them tried to die horribly. He said, now I'm standing before you today telling you on the cool better think twice about what you're getting ready to do. Yes, sir. Amen. Don't you wish your son would have thought twice? Yes. Come on, Lord. Oh, yes. Don't you think your little Euganesia would have thought twice? <laughs> oh, wait, well, let, let's, let's make it personal. Don't you wish uh, you would have thought twice? twice? Talk, sir. Talk, Pastor. Yeah. Mama told you that Negro wasn't no good. Mm. Oh, Don't you wish you would have thought twice? Amen, sir. Yeah. I see some crazy stuff on TikTok. Church. Have mercy, Lord. 
would be honored if you would accept the position of being pastor of this church. Amen. Let me just say something to you. Let me tell you how, how God works. I think it was a Wednesday night y'all voted. And I, I can't remember the exact night, but listen to me. This might help somebody. I knew that they were voting for a pastor for this church. And anybody who was here then, when there was no pastor here, you couldn't even get up in the pool if you so many preachers here. All sitting all down over here. I knew they was going to vote. I think it was a Wednesday night. You know what I did that Wednesday night? I went to bed. I went to bed. You know, worry is just like rocking in a rocking chair. It keeps you busy, but don't ever get you nowhere. Right. Right. I need you to listen to me. I went to bed. Because I wasn't going to lose sleep about what God already had for you. If, if it's for you. Go ahead. Don't get me wrong. After I became pastor, secretary showed me a stack of a resume like this. And yes, at the age I was, that was some older, more qualified. Pictures with him, the wife, the three little children, the dog, and the picket fence. <laughs> But if it's for you, yes, yes. if she's for you, right. if he's for you, right. touch your neighbor and say, you'll know. You'll know. I'm done. I wish I would drop this mic, but it costs too much. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, think twice. Think twice. Lord, if I only knew then what I know now. Yeah. Come on, stand to your feet.